Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. We are on the Riches of His Glory series. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much, my Father. Thank you for your grace, my Father, your mercies, my God. Thank you for the great love that you showed humanity by sending your Son, my God, to die on a cross so that we could be saved, so that we could be healed, free, Father God, and no longer live under a yoke of slavery, my Father, because of sin. Today we are forgiven. Today we walk in the light. Today the trajectory of our life has changed. We have taken a 180 degree turn, my Father. Today we leave a Christ legacy in the world and we thank you for that my father we thank you for that lord god because as i my god one day i realized and i thought and i pondered on the legacy that my parents had left in the world my father and it was a legacy that was very sad it was drugs, jail, and death, my father. And when I realized that I could change that legacy, I could do something different, my father. You had already walked into my life. You had already spoken to me about a book. You had already spoken to me that I had a purpose and a calling that I had an identity in you, my father. And I started leaning into that and I started diving into your grace, my father, my God. And serving you became one of my life's greatest missions, my father. And later you started to validate me and affirm me as, an, as a writer something that I never in a million years would have thought that that would have been possible. But you said that I could do that and that changed the legacy, the mark that I left or I am leaving on this world, my father. That my parents' legacy, I cannot change that, but what I can change, I am doing to the best of my ability, by your grace and your mercy, my Father. And their legacy has also changed my Father. By what I'm doing, my God, by how I'm speaking about the gospel, how I'm speaking of you, how I am conducting my life, their legacy has also changed my father. I have also changed their legacy, not only my own, but theirs as well. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity, my God, to change the legacy of drugs, jail, and death to a life in Christ, a life surrendered to Christ, obedient to Christ, living every day in the peace and the joy of Christ, speaking to the world about Christ. That is the legacy that I am leaving on this world, my Father. And I thank you for giving me the opportunity and I thank you for blessing me and affirming me when I thought I couldn't. You saw what I could be and I believed you and you were right and there is still a lot of work to be done my father but i know that with you standing next to me leading me by the hand my father my god that we are going to get far and whatever your purposes and your plans are because i am aligned to your plans not your plans aligned to mine. I am aligned to you. 
and it is about you and what you want to do with this world and with this nation and with this generation, my Father. And I am humbled, my God, that these messages on YouTube, my Father, will be found and will be heard by the right people. And even after I'm gone, my Father, the legacy of my love for you will remain. In the mighty name of Jesus, I give you praise. Thank you. We are on the riches of his glory series, and one of the riches is legacy. And today I'm going to speak about a very famous person. Let me tell you a little bit of the backstory. Tug McGraw was quite the baseball pitcher. He won two World Series with the New York Mets and was one of the best closing pitchers in Philadelphia Phillies history. McGraw was a team cheerleader, the guy who coined the phrase, you gotta believe. He might still be on television as a game announcer today if it hadn't been for the sudden change of health that came in 2003. By that time, the brain tumor was discovered. Doctors told Tug, all of 59 years old, that he only had three weeks to live. He lived nine months, pouring his time into his family and into a legacy dedicated to curing brain cancer and even reconciling with a part of his past he had tried to ignore. He had a wife and kids, but he also had another son he had also ignored. The mother was Elizabeth Diagostino. She didn't tell her son about his famous father, in part because she wanted to move past that particular part of her life too. But Tim found his birth certificate one day and made the most shocking discovery of his life. His favorite baseball player was also his father. And Tim changed his name from Tim Trimble to Tim McGraw. Tim McGraw is an American country singer, songwriter, record producer, and actor. Tim found Tug when he was an older teenager, but there was nothing there. There was no warm feelings, no immediate connection, and no future. But once more as an adult, Tim tried it again, and the second time the attraction took. Father and son, as strange as it must have seemed to them, became close. And when news came that the time was running out, they became closer still. In the end, Tug McGraw even died at Tim McGraw's Nashville home. In 2004, Tim's song, Live Like You Were Dying, stayed on top of the charts for 10 weeks, breaking a record that had stood for 30 years and was named the Top Country Song of the Year by Billboard magazine. It was the story of a man who got the news that he was dying. A man made a decision of how he would live with the time that he had left. Would it make a difference if you learned you had very little time left? Would it change your priorities if you felt life slipping away? We are all running out of time. The opportunity to leave the legacy we want is one day shorter than it was yesterday. One day, a man approached Jesus with the same kinds of questions. We don't know how, this, how his circumstances were affecting his life, but we do know he was wrestling with ultimate issues. And though Jesus was surrounded at that time by men intent on arguing with him, this man was not one of them. He approached the group and heard them debating. He listened, recognized Jesus as a brilliant teacher, and went straight to the heart of the matter. It was a twofold approach to life. Love God. Love the people that God puts around you. And Jesus modeled this perfectly. 
But this man that approached Jesus heard him debating and he listened. Going straight to the matter. And what is the straight to the matter issue that this man went to directly to? Love the people God puts around you. Jesus modeled this perfectly. This man wanted to know more about Jesus. And if you think about it, he didn't leave a legacy of money, property, or power. Instead, he left a legacy of loving God completely and sacrificially loving us. And that was the legacy that Jesus left behind. When Jesus was asked about the most important commandment of all, he quoted the Shema. In Hebrew, is here, O Israel. The Shema is an important passage. It is the very first passage a Jewish child will memorize. So treasured are the words. They are written on small scrolls, rolled up and inserted into a small container called the Masusas, which marks the doorway of Jewish homes. And the questions of the most important commandment had long been settled among God's people. Love the Lord God with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your might. And all of Israel knew that truth. Knowing the truth was the easy part. Putting it to work was the difficult part, but not for Jesus. He loved God completely. He wasn't interested in power, wealth, or popularity, but he was passionate about God. He depended on God through prayer, through knowing the scriptures and by submitting to God's will, even at the cost of his own life. What's involved in loving God completely? The better question would be what is not involved. According to Mark 10, 17 through 22, another man approached Jesus, desperately wanting to please God. He ran up to Jesus, fell on his knees before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inher inherit eternal life? And Jesus told him, You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Do not defraud. Honor, honor your father and your mother. The man on his knees insisted that he kept all of the rules. He didn't, really. He merely claimed the external righteousness that wealthy Jews of his time believed they could purchase through their alms giving, and that was offerings. And yet he's still on his knees, still waiting on the answer. Obviously something is missing. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. The man's countenance fell. He felt overwhelmed with emotion. This is where we learn that he was also a very wealthy individual. The problem? He loved his wealth too much to give it all away. And until he was willing to make that sacrifice, he could not have the one thing he lacked, Jesus. When we realize who Jesus is and what he offers us, there is no cost. We should be unwilling to pay to have it and have him. Jesus loved the rich young ruler, but the man who came to him couldn't part with the things he loved. If God, if loving God completely meant submitting every bit of his money to God, he could not cross that line. So he prayed that he had been untruthful. He claimed to have kept all of the law since his youth, but he walked away, having broken the greatest commandment. And therefore, he fell into the category of knowing the truth, but not putting it into practice. So, what does it take for you to love God completely to the point where you can leave a legacy of love and of service to Christ and to others. What does that legacy look like? For each person, the legacy 
that they might be willing to do or have a vision in their mind is completely different because everyone is different. So therefore, the mission might be different. The service to others might be different. You don't have to do great and mighty things in order to be effective. Like I've said before, in the service to others devotional, we can start small. But the, the most important thing is starting. The most important thing is knowing what is my purpose? What is my plan? What am I good at? What do I have a passion for? What do I do well? Just know things about yourself that might lead you closer to the answer to what the purposes and the plans are. So the basic, the basic things are basically to love God with all of our heart and love our neighbor as ourself. And so as we love God, we learn to be in service to others. And as we serve others with our love, with our attention, with our mercy, with our kindness, with our time, our talent, and our resources, we are leaving a legacy behind, a legacy of love. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for this message, my Father. Thank you so much, my Lord, that we can only do, my God, a legacy that is worthwhile when you are in our lives, my Father. We can be the biggest philanthropist, Lord God. We can give away millions and millions of dollars, my Father, Lord God. But if we don't have you in our lives, if we don't have love and the service and the mercy and compassions, my Father, for the world and for showing people your love, my God, we don't really leave a legacy a Christ legacy, which is the one that is most important, the one that counts. Help us every day to leave a legacy behind, my Father, a, a legacy that is going to speak about who you were in our lives and in the lives of our family. We give you all the praise. I ask you, my Father, to bless each and every one of my subscribers, that they're your subscribers too, my Father. Bless them with peace and with grace and with your love, my Father, and lead them down paths of righteousness, my God. Speak to their hearts, my Father, in truly what it is that you want them to do, my God. And my Father, I pray that they have no fear in obeying you, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my Father, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Sanctifier, we love you and we praise you. Amen, Lord God. Thank you, Father. The goodness of God is all around us. And if you want to receive and to be able to enjoy the goodness of God and all that it entails, the blessings, the peace, the joy, I invite you to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The goodness of God is available to you today. If you have not received Jesus, do not wait. Do it today. Do not wait to be perfect or rich. Do not wait to have a bigger house or a better job and have everything right in your life. Do it today, my friend. It is my honor to lead you in this prayer. And you might think that this is so simple. How can a simple prayer make something so important like receiving Jesus as my Lord and Savior? How can that be? Jesus made this process so easy, and yet it is so powerful. 
So follow me in this prayer. Father God, thank you so much for Jesus Christ, your son. I believe that he died and he bled and that he resurrected on the third day. I realize that I am a sinner and I ask you forgiveness for my sins. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Make something wonderful of my life as I promise to follow you from this day forward. Amen. My friend, if you've done that prayer, if you've said that prayer, there is a celebration in heaven as heaven celebrates with the repentance of every sinner. Congratulations. You are now part of the family of God.